and says the evidence proves higher capital gains taxes means less revenue for the government and less investment in the economy. But David Callahanna, a senior fellow with Demo, says there's no reason to tax wealth at a lower rate than work. Good to see you, gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us. So, David, there's the argument that raising the capital gains tax, as President Obama is proposing, will discourage investment at a time when the country really needs that investment. You don't buy into that argument. No, I think Warren Buffett had it right when he said, you know, that he'd been in this business for a long time and he'd seen periods where the, the capital gains tax was much higher and still plenty of people investing. We had a 25 percent capital gains tax rate during the 50s and 60s. Those were boom years. We also had a, a high tax, capital gains tax rate compared to today during the early 1990s and late 1980s. Again, lots of economic growth then. So, you know, I want to come back to Robert Frank's point, which is that lots of other big things drive the economy. The difference in tax rates are, are, are not the central factor. Scott, you disagree. Why do you think the discussion in Congress on the capital gains tax is important to whether a deal gets done to overhaul the whole tax code? Well, this debate over capital gains is really a proxy war of the differences in the way that each side sees in how progressive the tax code should be. Obviously, Democrats don't believe capital gains is earned income, whereas uh, Republicans believe it's very important to capital formation and, uh, and really uh, taking the, the, the taxes out of risk. And uh, we have always taxed capital gains at a lower rate than income, going back to the history of the tax code. And we've seen that every time capital gains uh, rates have come down, Realizations have gone up and tax revenues from capital gains has gone up. On the other hand, when you increase uh, capital gains rates, uh, rates uh, tax revenues go down. So there's an inverse relationship uh, between rates and revenues. Well, wait a second. And Scott, would you be in support of keeping the capital gains tax at the current level yes. if the other things were taken out of the tax code, the loopholes, the other deductions for the wealthy yeah. were eliminated? Absolutely. We should eliminate uh, as many of these kinds of uh, loopholes and deductions as possible while lowering overall rates. I believe that the, the tax base should be as broad as possible while we're lowering tax rates. David, what about that? Well, let's just be clear. The uh, low, low taxes on capital gains are one of the major loopholes in our tax code. And the no. Simpson-Bowles oh, no, Commission... No, no. The Simpson -Bowles no, that's not Commission the loopholes we're talking about. That's not really a loophole. That's well, the way the tax it's, is. It is, it's, it's, it is it's preferential. very straightforward. Maria, it is preferential treatment of capital gains income. That, in my book, is a loophole. And the Simpson-Bowles Commission... Why is it a loophole? The well, Simpson, why is it a loophole? It's, it's uh, you've got 100 it's million a, Americans that, that, that invest in stocks. You know, you, a, you, just because you're, you're a guy who has a large portfolio doesn't mean that you're any different than the person who has money in stocks through their pension, through their 401k. So let's be clear here. A lot of people own stocks, more so than just the wealthy. What? Two-thirds of all capital gains income goes to the top 5 percent. This overwhelmingly benefits the wealthy, and that's why the Republican Party is fighting to the death to protect it. Look, Mitt Romney paid 14 percent uh, income uh, taxes on his capital gains income. That rubs a lot of people the wrong way. Way. You know, when you have secretaries paying a higher rate, raises fundamental questions well, you about have fairness. A, you have a secretary, let's just be clear. Come on. When, when you have a secretary paying a much lower rate, like the Warren Buffett story that you're bringing up, Warren Buffett does not have income. He's getting taxed on his investments, whereas the secretary has whatever she makes in income, so she's getting paid the, the income tax, which is higher than capital gains. So it's not really, you know, it's, you're, you're going to orange apples and oranges. You want to well, be clear here capital gains versus income taxes, because just well, to say, Secretaries pay a lower rate than well, their bosses. Well, Maria, let me. Okay. okay let's you paid. You, you paid a. Uh, you paid a higher rate in 2010, twice as high probably than Mitt Romney did when he was campaigning full time for president. Okay, you came into the office every day. Why should you pay twice the tax rate as somebody who's who's not even working every day for a living? I don't get it. I don't get it. Get it. Absolutely absolutely he's not that's breaking absolutely the law, false. though. It's all I, in. I'm not saying he's breaking the law. My point is, it's preferential treatment of income from wealth. Preference in that the President Obama world. hasn't changed. How come President Obama hasn't eliminated the loopholes in the last three years? Look, the Simpson Bowles Commission suggested treating capital gains and dividends income as ordinary income. That was one of the main loopholes they wanted to close. It raised half a trillion dollars in the next decade. We How need come that we didn't money. Do it? We blew we them off, Simpson Bowles. How come? <laughs> well, it's a look, it's an important recommendation. We need that. We need the somebody has got to, to pay more taxes to deal with our fiscal situation. <laughs> Closing that capital gains income uh, loophole makes a lot of sense. That's why Simpson Bowles suggested it, along with a lot of other loopholes. Nice.
All right, gentlemen, this conversation is one of my favorites. I appreciate your insights on this. We'll see. We'll have you back soon to continue the conversation. Thanks, gentlemen. Good to be here. We'll see you soon. David, Scott, take care.